In January 2000, the cool logs were selected and cut from the tropical forests of Fiji. Their destiny to bring forth the birthing of Iosepa. ship to Laie, located on the northeast shore of Oahu, Hawaii, with the Jonathan Napella Center for Hawaiian Language and Cultural Studies of Brigham Young University, Hawaii, together with master carvers Tuyone Polotu and Kavika Eskaran, and many, many community members engaged in the building of a double-hauled Hawaiian voyaging canoe. Yosepa represents the connection, love, and respect that Hawaiians and all Pacific Islanders have for the land. Ocean, ancestors, and children. Voyaging canoes are a fundamental tradition of the island nations of the Pacific Ocean, which covers half of the Earth's surface. Its 10,000 islands form Polynesia, Melanesia, and Micronesia. During the last 2,000 years, the Pacific Ocean became a highway for the discovery and settlement of many Pacific Islands. Prior to the 18th century, Hawaiians had neither metals, Arabic numbers, nor wheels. Yet, they were able to build canoes that would travel thousands of miles through the fiercest ocean of the world. Voyaging canoes, its building and navigation, were a ritual for the ancient community and the means of survival and exploration. Today, the significance and art of canoe making and navigation are still alive in the hearts and hands of the peoples of the Pacific. Yosepa now joins the ahana of these great voyaging canoes that preserve our past and perpetuate Hawaiian ideals 
values and skills. This is made possible through the talents and devotion of Mao Piai Lu of Satawal, Micronesia. Mao inspired and taught many how to navigate using the sun, the moon, the rising and setting of stars, and ocean swells to find tiny islands in the vast Pacific Ocean. When Mao visited Yosepa's building site, he shared his plans for the year 2004. 2004 is like training because nobody is here from here on the way down to Macronesia. That's why I like all the old canoe in Hawaii. They sail together from Hawaii to Micronesia. More people learn because I know that before is in here is we lost the culture, right? That's why I like I like more more learning when I when I still enough. Mao was the first navigator of Hokulea, the first contemporary double-hulled Hawaiian voyaging canoe to sail without modern instruments from Hawaii to Tahiti in 1976. Nainoa Thompson, who learned celestial navigation from Mao, shares his thoughts about Hokulea. Specifically, a, a, an anthropologist from New Zealand by the name of Andrew Sharp, who said he agreed that the Polynesians colonized this huge nation, but he disagreed with oral traditions that talked about the great canoes, the great navigators, the great migration voyages. He, he challenged all of that by saying, fundamentally saying that the Polynesians did not have the intelligence to navigate more than 100 miles from land. So that would, so his explanation between the continued migrations between Hawaii and Tahiti, which are 2,500 miles away, was all accident. I mean, to me, it's more difficult to consider the notion that you would have an ocean world so big and so far apart, and every island nearly colonized so far back in time to being done by accident. So that was the premise from the scientific point of view in the early 70s, to some degree I would think hopefully I heavily challenged that because we've sailed so far to so many islands and we did it without instruments. In addition to Hokulea, other Hawaiian voyaging canoes were built and sailed on the Pacific waters such as Makali'i. Hawaiians and other Pacific Islanders maintained skills of canoe building and navigation. The Tamakau was built in 1985 by Ilaichia Lendua and community members of the Tambara Island of Fiji. The Tamakau was built after the tradition of the Fijian ancestors. After the appropriate ceremonies were conducted, the logs were selected and cut. Kimini sakana kalo oro saka me kimami na tebuta ka indona dagadaka na singe dindai kimami sabo kamba uta ka kila ni dagadaka no muni abura bura no muni ku kimami kimami no muni kimami bonu ni be kimuni ni boni na bakatu lewa na dagadaka sabo ro men grabi mai beira ra sana graba kimami salai ba be kimuni na kalo me adokina na no muni lewa mami bakila ni tu na lenga as done anciently, the logs were carved in the forest and then dragged by hand from the mountains to the beach. Coconut fibers were used to hold the wooden planks together. Breadfruit sap was boiled and used as glue. After its creation, Fijian Prime Minister Ratu Sirkamasesi Mara 
shift the Tamakau to the Polynesian Cultural Center located in Laie, Hawaii. After 15 years out of the water, Iosepa Carvers decided to bring the Tamakau to the building site to be refurbished. Tonga is another island nation that recently revived their ancient canoe-making tradition. In 1999, Iosepa's master carver, Tuioni Polotu, was commissioned to build a voyaging canoe for the king of Tonga, Taufa Ahau Tupo IV. The Meli Naomi is a 105-foot traditional Tongan double-hulled canoe known as Kalia. Yosepa is a dream coming true. After traveling over 3,000 miles, the Fijian logs arrived at Laie on February 8, 2001. There were seven logs, six of which weighted over 6,000 pounds. When the first log was rolled off of the first semi-truck, it hit the ground and the ground shook and it rumbled. And at the same time, up in the mountains, uh, there were rumblings as though, you know, thunder had just occurred. And uh, almost simultaneously, and uh, to those who are, you know, of Polynesian or Hawaiian descent, that is uh, a very good sign. Um, also, it began to rain just slightly, just a uh, soft rain, and that too is a good sign. And Uncle Bill shared that he felt as though the kupuna of our area were rejoicing that something like that was going to begin. Uh, he also felt as though uh, our Fijian cousins also, their ancestors were there to acknowledge that this was something of great value to our people. In keeping with tradition, Bill Wallace, the visionary and coordinator for Yosepa, performed a welcoming ceremony. When we decided to uh, make our wa'akaulua, we knew that it was very important for us to include and essential for us to include many of the protocols and ceremonies associated with uh, building uh, a traditional canoe. So it's very important for us to maintain and to keep these Hawaiian protocols as part of our uh, process that we went through. Uh, without that, we would have not been able to include our ancestors in what we're doing. By us participating and using these ceremonies and protocols that have been passed down from our ancestors, we include them in all that we're doing. <laughs> 